Before we begin, we'd like to give special thanks to all of our sponsors for helping make this event possible each year. Specifically, thank you to CRL FormFox for being our title sponsor for five consecutive years. And thank you to our platinum sponsors, AuraSure Technologies, Psychmedics, Samba Safety, UKG, and Quest Diagnostics. Hi, thank you everyone for joining us for our last session of Day with DISA. Today's session will be a high-level overview of DISA's entire product suite, and we're joined today by Colin Woods, the General Manager at DISA Global Solutions. Colin, thanks for joining us. Thanks for, having, Thanks for having me, Thomas. Awesome. Well, before we jump into the presentation, I want to remind everyone that if you have questions, use the Q&A button at the bottom right of the player. Uh, additionally, if we're unable to answer your question today, we'll reach back out to you after Day with DISA. Uh, and then lastly, we will make a copy of this presentation available for download. It'll be in the Materials tab after the session, so keep an eye out for that. With that, Colin, take it away. Thanks so much. Thanks so much, Thomas. Today, I'm going to be talking about the overview of the entire DISA product suite. Like Thomas mentioned, my name is Colin Woods, and I'm a general manager at DISA Global Solutions. I've been with DISA since 2002. So over the last 20 years, I've been fortunate enough to see DISA add products, add functionality, and really grow and evolve as a company. Today, I'm going to walk through those different products and services, as well as give you a peek under the tent as far as future aspects of, of the business. So let's start out with who is DISA? You know, we were founded back in 1986 as a third party administrator or TPA. You're gonna hear that term a lot. A third party administrator manages all aspects of chain of custody processes for various products and services. We are an industry leader. We started the first and largest contractor consortium program of its kind. We have 55,000 client companies across the enterprise, ranging from one-person operations to Fortune 500 companies. 27% of Fortune 500 companies utilize DISA in some form or fashion. We've got 6 million unique employee records, and we are producing over 10 million different customer products annually. We've got three dozen offices across North America, and I'll, I'll get into a little bit more detail about some of their uh, products and services that they offer at the individual sites. And we have been ranked the number one TPA brand since 2017 across the industry. Now, what's driving that number one brand? It's really our people and our platform. We have been dedicated to quality and service as long as DISA has been in business. It's keeping that customer focus, it's gaining that client feedback and responding to that client feedback. And we'll talk a lot about the different initiatives we've put into place over the years and where we're going with those as well. And then from the platform perspective, DISA is a tech-enabled company. We leverage technology both with proprietary systems that we have built out over the years, as well as third-party systems to help make the client experience better quicker, and more accurate. The next couple of slides will touch on the various services that we have to offer our clients, and then we'll dive into more detail in each of these. So back in 1986, we started with drug and alcohol testing. And so this was our first program. Even today, it is our largest program, although all of these other uh, services that we'll talk about are definitely uh, gaining traction and growing significantly as well. But with regards to drug and alcohol testing, again, as a TPA, we focused on managing the complete chain of custody process. And, and I'll talk more in detail about this, but this starts with the employee, ultimately goes through the process of the testing initiatives, and then ultimately gets that information back to the employer so they can make informed decisions. We're covering all policy types, including corporate, DOT, which stands for Department of Transportation, as well as our secret sauce, the contractor compliance program. Uh, it's covering all number of tests, which again, we'll go into a little bit more detail on, uh, as well as methodologies. So the types of tests that we are screening employees for. And over the years, we focused heavily on leveraging technology, 
And so you'll hear a lot about the electronic capabilities that we have in all of our services. Couple that with the background screening programs that we developed nearly 20 years ago. And the focus there was to provide the necessary products to help compliance, uh, as well as the user experience, making standardized packages, grading and evaluation, and constantly maintaining that compliance through the life of the employee. So again, you're gonna hear about a lot of renewal and reminder notices that are automatically going out for a variety of our products. Some of the background check products you can see there include various criminal checks, civil searches, certainly social security validity checks to just validate that this individual is who they say they are, and then verification products ranging from education, employment, personal, and, and license verification. Now, with regards to some of our newer services, and I, I say newer, we started adding some of these over the last 10 to 12 years, but transportation compliance has been a very quickly growing service for our, our company. It encompasses a number of different products that clients need to comply with both legal and federal regulations, as well as company policies. Now, Department of Transportation is not just limited to the trucking industry, although that is the largest regulated industry in the United States. We cover all modalities. So all Department of Transportation agencies to help clients, again, comply with those federal regulations and make sure those employees are going to work safely. Some of the uh, transportation compliance products include motor, motor vehicle reports, previous employer reports, both from a drug testing history performance with the clearinghouse, as well as safety performance. Uh, they also include driver qualification files, which I'll get into more detail on later, uh, as well as fleet management. So moving away from the driver and focusing more on the vehicle and some of the requirements to ensure that that vehicle is in compliance to be on the road and operating. Another one of our very quickly growing services is occupational health screening. And again, this has a number of different product components that, that roll up into it. You can see a variety of products here as a sampling. The vast majority of our client base has industry requirements, whether they are regulated, whether the legal requirements at the state level, or whether they're just industry norms and best practices to ensure that that worker is fit for duty and ultimately doing their jobs safely and securely. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about our training and compliance solutions. Again, focused on education, both at the employee level as well as the supervisor level, and then also working to ensure that policies are up to date and accommodating for the variety of legal uh, requirements at the state level and the ever-changing dynamics that an employer has to deal with. Now, we've always thought about our policy program types in three buckets. The first one is corporate policies. Corporate policies are up to the employer, their choice to drug test for certain drugs at a certain random frequency. Uh, or, or prefer, provide certain background check products. So again, the company needs to put together policies to help them drive their initiatives for safety and security. The second bucket is DOT, Department of Transportation. There are a number of DOT agencies that are federally regulated. And so what DISA is working to help our clients with is comply with those various DOT requirements. And those include drug testing and background screening and occupational health services, as well as that large transportation compliance bucket. So first one, corporate policies, it's the employer's choice. The second one, the federal government is dictating those standards and requirements. And then the third one is what we refer to as our contractor compliance programs. And this is, uh, it, it's a unique solution, but essentially what we're looking at are facilities that have safety and security concerns and risks. And they're also using contractor companies and contractor workers 
to facilitate a lot of the activity on site. So think of scaffold building companies that are coming on site to build scaffolding, move it, and then ultimately take it down. Those individuals are not actively employed by that facility. They're contracted, but they still have to meet certain standards put forth by that facility. We are helping both that contractor company as well as the owner ensure compliance with the various requirements and ultimately create transparency so all parties involved know that they are in compliance or what pieces are missing to ensure that compliance. So I've talked a lot about compliance and, and that really is our focus. We believe strongly in Compliant programs will mitigate risk. They will drive a safer, more secure workforce, and that's going to protect the people, the property, the environment, and that company's reputation. You can see uh, over on the left-hand side of this slide uh, when we start talking about all federal agencies, again, all modalities, including FAA, so the Federal Aviation Administration. FMCSA, Federal Motor Carrier, this is the largest DOT regulated agency, including the trucking industry. FRA, which is railroad. FTA, Federal Transit Administration. PHMSA, so pipeline hazardous materials. There are hundreds of thousands of individuals working on transmission pipeline that are covered by federal regulations. And then lastly, US Coast Guard, which originally was under that DOT umbrella and moved under the Homeland Security umbrella. Uh, again, very specific regulations that companies and ultimately those employees need to comply with. We've got an in-house compliance team that is constantly monitoring legal requirements at the state level, federal requirements and updates that are taking place uh, typically annually and then working very closely with those clients to make sure their policies are in place and any necessary reporting is taking place. Uh, with regards to training, and we touched on it briefly, but we wanna make sure both the employer as well as those employees understand what's required of them from a policy perspective and they take the necessary steps to comply with those policies. This is just a brief snapshot of a little bit of the DISA evolution. Uh, again, started in 1986. In 1992, we created that DISA Contractors Consortium. In 2003, we introduced our new DISA Works online platform. So we went from an old school DOS based system to a web based platform. In 2004, working very closely with a local safety council. Uh, we were able to launch the North American Substance Abuse Policy. This was a drug testing program heavily focused on uh, the um, energy sectors. In 2008, we expanded our urinalysis testing and added hair testing, occupational health services, as well as mobile and on-site testing. So we've got thousands of collection facilities within our network where our clients are able to go and, and perform whatever drug testing requirements or occupational health screens they have. But we also have mobile and on-site capabilities that allow us and or our vendor partners to go to a client's location. Uh, again, reduce some of that travel burden, uh, saves time and ultimately creates a more productive experience. And then like I mentioned about 10 years ago, we started heavily focusing on transportation compliance solutions by building out the driver qualification files, as well as adding licensing and permitting and tax refund services. In 2015, we further expanded our drug testing methodologies to include oral fluid testing, and then we've constantly continued to focus on building out that training and compliance support. Uh, in 2020, we further expanded that transportation solution by adding continuous driver monitoring, which again, I'll focus on a little later in the presentation. And then lastly, uh, DISA Hire, which is an applicant tracking system. It helps on the recruiting side of the hiring process 
and is integrated with the DISA services that are required to typically onboard a new employee, such as drug testing and background screening. Now, a little deeper dive within uh, drug and alcohol testing services. We talked about the various types of programs from corporate to DOT to consortium. We've also touched briefly on the methodologies of urinalysis, hair, oral fluid, and breath alcohol testing. Within each of these methodologies, there are pros and cons. And so with regards to the urinalysis testing, which is part of the Department of Transportation regulations, it is hypersensitive. It has an expanded panel, so it can test for many drugs. And it's got a detection window that varies anywhere from a couple of days up to a week plus. Now with hair testing, you've got pros and cons. Uh, the pros are it is a little tape recorder. So as your hair grows out, that drug metabolite stays in the cortex of the hair. So the detection window, once that hair grows out after a week or two, ranges up to an industry standard of approximately 90 days. With oral fluid testing, again, hypersensitive, 100% observed, you're putting the swab in your mouth to, to collect that saliva, and you can have an expanded panel. So a number of different drugs, very similar to urinalysis testing. Uh, the detection window, again, ranges from one day up to several days. And then with breath alcohol testing, the focus here is really regarding impairment. And so we want to identify whether or not that individual has alcohol in their system that could be creating an impairment situation. Whereas with these previous methodologies, we've been talking about drug detection that goes back anywhere from one day up to a few months. Types of testing, we perform all of them. And in most cases, our clients have requirements to perform each of these different test requirements. The most common is pre-employment testing where they are performing it on new hires. Random testing is something that happens very, very frequently, both as a requirement for the Department of Transportation, a requirement for the contractor's consortium, and a best practice for those corporate policies. And the focus with random testing, first and foremost, is deterrence. It's creating that potential concern for that illicit drug abuser to say, you know what, I don't want to risk this, or I don't want to be at this company, and they, they leave that employment. The second point of the random testing is certainly detection. And so randomly testing employees monthly and quarterly throughout the year, it's going to create the deterrent, but it's also going to have a detection event where you will identify individuals that are abusing and violating that policy. So what's available? The complete chain of custody process, which I'll talk about on the next slide. Laboratory analysis, that electronic scheduling and tracking. Again, heavy focus on leveraging IT to make the process quicker and more accurate. The extensive collection site network, those 6,000 plus locations, giving the convenience to that employee who needs to perform the test, and then ultimately a lot of compliance assistance. So this slide details the chain of custody process, and it is complex. It has a number of moving parts, and DISA, as a third-party administrator, or TPA, our job is to manage all of these moving parts on behalf of the client. So the chain of custody process starts with the client and their policy. And again, the policy is the written document that spells out the rules of engagement with regards to who to test, when to test, what to test for. Um, once the client has notified the employee or applicant that they are required to take a test, that employee will go to a collection site. Now, collection sites roles are to collect the specimen. We talked on the previous slide about oral fluid testing or hair testing. So they will take that hair sample as an example, package it up, and ship it off to the laboratory for analysis. Now the laboratory's primary job is to identify whether or not the drug is present in that sample. 
based on that client's policy. If the lab identifies that that drug is present, they will communicate that information to the MRO, the medical review officer, whose primary role is to determine whether or not that drug is there legitimately or illicitly. Now, I'll give you an example. The laboratory identifies that hydrocodone, which is an opioid, is present in a hair sample. They communicate that to the MRO. The MRO will perform a donor interview where they're working with that individual employee to identify whether or not they have a legitimate prescription prescribed by a doctor filled in their name. If the answers to these questions and part of this donor interview process uh, meet the criteria of the MRO review, they will ultimately deem that as a legitimate reason and report that test out as negative. Now, flip side is, let's say the laboratory identifies a cocaine drug metabolite. They communicate their findings to the MRO. The donor interview takes place. However, it is incredibly unlikely that that donor has a prescription for cocaine. And so ultimately, once that donor interview takes place, the MRO will report that drug test out as positive to the client. Then the client will follow their policy to determine any next steps with regards to that applicant or employee. Now, we've got two other circles in this chain of custody process that could occur based on those policy requirements or regulatory requirements. The first one is the SAP, or Substance Abuse Professional. This is the individual that is going to coordinate with the employee to identify what, if any, follow-up testing is required, what, if any, counseling or treatment is required. Again, these are separate professionals outside of the laboratory or MRO or DISA as a TPA relationship, and they are certified professionals that will make that evaluation and determination. Once they have done that, they will communicate those steps and requirements to the return to, to duty department. The return to duty department will track the follow-up testing that will take place, the time frame that that testing needs to take place over, and whether or not any additional counseling or treatment has occurred. And ultimately, all of that will be uh, encapsulated in that employee file to sign off that, yes, this individual has done the necessary steps to rehabilitate per the policy and move back into the workforce. Now, with regards to background screening services, we talked about a number of different uh, functionality and products available to our clients. First and foremost, the online ordering and tracking is imperative. We wanna go electronic. We wanna make sure that data is as accurate and clean as possible while improving that turnaround time. So how quickly can I get those reports back? We've also factored in grading and evaluation, and I'll show you an example on the next slide but essentially to focus on standardization across a client company, all their hiring managers, HR professionals, et cetera. We've created tools to standardize what products are ordered and how those products are evaluated. Uh, and again, with all of these scenarios, FCRA compliance or Fair Credit Reporting Act compliance is essential. So we also are providing pre-adverse and adverse action notices to the employer uh, you know, to ensure that they are taking the necessary steps with the employee in the event that records are identified. Now, we talk about turnaround time. A number of these products are instant uh, because of our electronic capabilities and constantly, very similar to our drug testing, we've got renewal notices or reminder notices. Think of them almost like random notices. Uh, again, focused on making sure not only have you onboarded that new employee, but you're maintaining that employee's comp compliance through their tenure at that company. Uh, one additional thing we've added over the years is the applicant order process. Um, if you're anything like me, your handwriting is almost illegible. 
And so you can imagine when I'm asked to write down all of my personal information for that HR professional, and then they have to data enter it into the system to order it online, uh, there's certainly some room for error. And so what we've done is we've removed that component as an option where now the applicant can go online and fill out their information. Again, very rarely do I misspell my name. So uh, it, it's something where my information is going to be accurate. It, it takes the handwriting out of the equation. And all of this improves that accuracy as well as the speed to which with we can retrieve uh, information. You can see some of the sample uh, products that I've talked about already. Uh, again, the focus here is really around safety and security. So depending on the industry you're in and the policy requirements, whether they're federal, federally regulated or they're company driven, you can see that all of these different products are really focused on addressing security. Is it, is it safety performance with your driving record? Is it theft, drugs, and violence tied to any criminal history? Um, are you, are, do you have the certifications and experience that you say you do? So as an example, highest level of education. So again, when you start coupling these together as a client and, and into your program, it's all focused on improving the productivity of that employee, the performance, while mitigating that risk. Now, this is an example of a grading and evaluating scale that we use across the vast majority of uh, our client base with regards to our background screening products. It's a zero to seven scale, and you can see zero, no records found. It's clear, which 85% of the time, that's the case. But as you move up in score, you also move up in the severity of that violation. So ultimately going from something like nonviolent misdemeanors up to higher felonies and even Patriot Act hits. Now the next group of products uh, that I wanna talk about are tied to our transportation compliance. And again, this isn't just one service or, or one set of products. It's a number of different solutions coupled together to help those regulated and non-regulated clients that have people operating machinery and vehicles, um, you know, that assistance to comply with their policies. I'm gonna start with the driver management first. Uh, you can see we've got three pillars here. The first one is speaking about driver qualification files, which is a federal requirement for the Department of Transportation but it's also used as a best practice for individuals that aren't federally regulated. And I'll give you an example. There are a number of clients in industries where company vehicles, a Ford F-150 or a Ford Taurus to drive to customer locations are utilized. And so oftentimes we'll see those clients leverage the driver qualification system to manage those individuals as well. But bottom line, this is focused on real-time online access. We wanna make sure that clients have the visibility into this file that has a number of different components so they can manage the, the compliance of that employee, but ultimately create a safer driver. So automatic renewals, again, common theme, you've heard a lot about it, but the vast majority of the products we've talked about today have recurring components. Annual checks for this, every two years you must do that. 50% random. And so we wanna make sure that our system is constantly notifying our clients when they are coming due for a renewal or an expiration. Another key benefit of this driver qualification file is that the other DESA services that are required components of that file auto-populate when clients are using it. So that DOT drug test, when you perform it via the DESA systems, it will auto-populate into that DQ file. Same thing with background checks, same thing with DOT driver physicals. And then in the event that you are audited on these files, we have created an online access portal for auditors where you can identify exactly which files they wanna look at and they will get a login so they can very easily, quickly, and cleanly see those files and each of the components. So 
So again, no going through a filing cabinet, no worrying about the fact that this file is in a completely different state at another, another one of your locations. It's all centralized electronically. Now this next pillar, HOS and OOR. And if you haven't noticed, we love to use acronyms around here. But HOS, or hours of service, and OOR, out of route reporting. Again, these are focused on whether or not that individual, that driver, is complying with the route, with the requirements of, of their drive time, et cetera. And over the years, a lot of this has shifted from paper to electronic, but we have both options available for clients based on their needs or their requirements. And again, the focus here is to be able to create customized reporting at that client level that gets them information very quickly so they can make adjustments and they can coordinate with that specific employee on, on any infractions or behaviors that they like to adjust. And then lastly, continuous driver monitoring. This is something that creates visibility into that driver's behavior on a 12-month basis. So you're constantly managing and monitoring that driver's behavior. Now, this creates the ability for real-time alerts on any negative driver activity. And what that allows the employer to do, our clients, is really work with that individual as a deterrent and, and, and hopefully some early intervention to prevent that behavior from ultimately creating a more significant incident or infraction. Now, on average, we have seen a 22% reduction in monthly violations across our client base. We've seen a 14% reduction in monthly crashes, which is huge. And we've seen a 32% reduction in company risk profile events. And again, company risk is incredibly important. You're constantly focused, people, property, environment, and ultimately that, that company reputation. Now, moving from the driver to the fleet, you can see we have a number of different solutions designed to help our clients manage their vehicles. Uh, I'm going to call out the first two, which license and permitting and fuel tax reporting. With regards to license and permitting, if you've ever seen those wide load placards uh, ensuring that they've got the right permits and, and uh, license plates, to, to operate a vehicle safely on the road, this is something that we will help coordinate on behalf of our clients. And again, this is a, a moving scenario where you've got new vehicles coming into the fleet, you've got to maintain existing vehicles, and ultimately, you know, uh, sunset uh, older vehicles. Now, with fuel tax reporting, uh, this, this literally is a, a, is a tax filing. Um, think of it as, when you've got a vehicle that is driving across state lines, they filled their vehicle up in one state, but as they're driving across state lines from state to state to state, that vehicle is utilizing the roads in those other states. When they fill up at the pump in the first state, they're paying taxes at the pump, but those taxes need to be appropriately allocated out to the states where they're driving the mileage in. So I may fill up in one state, drive 50 miles, but cross state line and drive 300 miles in the next state. And so we're assisting uh, with regards to a lot of automated GPS data, fuel card information to ultimately put those tax returns and, and allocations together on behalf of the clients. And this is something that is happening constantly throughout the year across the fleet of vehicles. A number of the other buckets that we have here speak to further opportunities to recover certain taxes and refunds based on the vehicles that they're driving and where they're driving. Toll cost analysis is going to focus on, again, making sure that driver is in their route, but more importantly, are the toll costs matching up to the various loads and ultimately any billings going out to their clients? And then you can see more automation with regards to e-log analysis, again, looking for equipment issues, violations, all the while focused on productivity and efficiency. The next section I want to touch on is occupational health services. 
So occupational health services cover a variety of products from physicals to vaccinations to various screens with regards to hearing and pulmonary function assessments. Now, the key with occupational health services is similar to the drug collections, employees are scattered all over the place. And so we want to make sure we've got this vast network of facilities where that, that employer applicant can complete their various screens. A couple different ways we do that. We are working with large national service providers like Concentra and Nova. And you can see a couple maps here where they've got that coverage from coast to coast to coast. But we've also got smaller regional players or independent facilities across our network, uh, again, in order to allow for a convenient location for that applicant. Now, another thing with regards to our occupational health services is what we refer to as occupational medical records tracking. It's a mouthful, so I'm going to call it OMRT. OMRT does a number of similar things to what we've talked about with our background screening ordering process or drug testing chain of custody process. We create standardized packages. So a grouping of products per that client's policy and their requirements. We have protocols that when the client orders OMRT packages online, that protocol is sent to a facility like Concentra as an example. So when that worker, that employee goes in, that Concentra facility knows what services are requested, they know what the protocol is, and ultimately that facility will report that information back to DISA for tracking, as well as consolidated billing. So the administrative burden is reduced on behalf of the client. The standardization of both what to order, the protocol required, and how to evaluate it is also put in place. So again, you've got consistency across your organization. And all of this is easy and available online. Now, in addition to the thousands of locations we have in our network with our vendor partners, DISA also has 20 different service centers that we own. And again, you can see a map here. Very similar to what we talked about on the previous slide, DISA's facilities uh, provide drug and alcohol uh, collections. They provide various OCMED screens, uh, like the physicals, pulmonary function, audiometric testing, and all of that is integrated into DISA works. So again, auto-populating for your driver qualification file and all of the same bundling and, and consolidation that you'd expect with any of our services. Now, lastly, I'm going to touch briefly on our training and compliance solutions. The first two buckets here are focused on education and awareness for the employee and their supervisors. With all of our policies and all of our client requirements, it is either required or strongly recommended that you are creating awareness and education programs, both for the employees as well as the supervisors. And oftentimes that supervisor training, although provided, it doesn't necessarily get the focus that it deserves and needs. That supervisor training builds the confidence in that people leader. So God forbid there is a situation that they need to, to react at, to. They've got the confidence. They've got the training to know what's next. And I can tell you step one is document, 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 but coordinate with other managers and supervisors that have been through similar training, make sure the safety of that employee is taken into consideration while you're taking the necessary steps with your policy. So all of these are covered in online trainings that we provide out to our clients. And all of those trainings have various updates that may occur with regards to you know, legal or regulatory changes that, that do happen in the industry. And then lastly, really focusing on the policy review. So are those policies being maintained? If you're a company in, in some of the states that have had marijuana legalization laws go into effect, you definitely want to make sure you're updating that policy. Even if you don't believe you've been impacted by you know, ever-changing laws, it's good to constantly review that policy with your legal team 
to ensure that it is the most up to date and ultimately it is communicated effectively to the employee population so everyone understands the ground rules. And then lastly, with regards to auditing support, our compliance team is here to help to make sure that if there are questions, whether it's a DOT auditing agency, whether it's a, a you know, a independent group that is auditing on behalf of one of your clients, we want to make sure you're comfortable in accessing any reports and statistical data that may be required by those, those entities. So in summary, this is focused on a number of different policy types ranging from your company's choice to DOT federally regulated requirements to that contractor's consortium where it may be the client of our client that has requirements or needs for compliance. We're managing various methodologies with regards to drug testing. We have approximately 30 background check products that clients can pick and choose from and ultimately bundle into a package. And we've got you know, dozens of various OC health screens, either facilitated by a DISA owned facility or one of our vendor partners throughout the network. Having been with DISA for 20 years now, I have seen this company grow and evolve. And one of the ways that we have gone through that evolution is through the acquisition of great companies in the industry. Most recently in Q4 of 2022, we were fortunate enough to acquire Global HR Research and CrimCheck. These two companies will bring additional products and services to the enterprise that allows clients to, again, further consolidate and, and leverage more tools to make sure that their policies and their compliance is being driven by a central point of contact, which is DISA. Now, with Global HR, they have a platform, again, with extensive functionality, heavily focused on the customer. And the customer is both the employer as well as the employee. And with CrimCheck, they have leveraged technology to improve turnaround time on a number of products, heavily focused on criminal checks. And so these acquisitions allow DISA and the enterprise to continue bringing value to customers and make sure that, that that customer experience is improved, again, both at the employer level and the individual employee or applicant level. Uh, extensive industry knowledge and leadership is gonna continue to drive this growth and evolution, and we look forward to continuing to partner with our clients to gain feedback and make those adjustments and improvements as the years come. I'd like to thank you all for your time today, and uh, I'll open it up to uh, any additional questions. Awesome. Great job as always, Colin. So Colin, yeah, we've got a bunch of questions. I know we're short on time, so let's just dive into them real quick. Before we start with the questions that have been submitted, how often are companies using DISA for multiple service lines? Yeah, great question. Uh, I mentioned we've got 55,000 client companies. Uh, over 60% of them are, are using multiple service lines. So whether that's coupling drug testing with background checks or adding occupational health service or transportation compliance services. And so, you know, one of the focus items for us is constantly creating that awareness with our client base and walking them through demos so they can understand some of the leverage and functionality that they've got access to already that they might not uh, be aware of. With recent marijuana law changes, does DISA provide detection for marijuana beyond the standard drug test? Yeah, great question. So this has, uh, and I'm sure we've got some presentations that have taken place this week, but this is a topic with regards to recent usage of marijuana. When I talked about those various methodologies from oral fluid to urine to hair, they had detection windows that went far beyond what we would consider recent usage. So over the last few hours, uh, I can tell you that DISA is working very closely with a company uh, that is developing this technology and it should be commercially available in the near future. And the focus there will be that detection on recent usage. So once that, uh, once that product and that solution is available, we'll work very closely with our clients to make sure that they're aware of it they understand its application. So 
So what's the test purpose? What are the policy implications? Are there certain states that may be more focused on leveraging this technology versus others? So more to come, but yes, Visa is very hyper-focused on, uh, on that yeah, emerging trend. Colin, do you integrate with, and, and then they go ahead and list their ATS, but do we integrate with ATSs, HRIS systems? What does that look like for DISA? We do. Uh, we have a number of integrations, both directly with clients or with applicant tracking or ATS companies where we may be in their marketplace. And what that allows is for a number of different clients to leverage that integration. Now, I talked about some of our recent acquisition activity in Q4 of 2022. Uh, there are some exciting new relationships and integrations that now are part of the DISA enterprise. And I can tell you that this is a top priority moving forward, working with our clients, as well as those HR and ATS companies out in the industry to ensure that we're all working together to provide that exceptional customer experience. Fantastic news. Um, for companies that don't have policies in place already, do we have templates that we offer? We, we do. And again, if I think about the three buckets from corporate, we have some general uh, policy templates, and we also work with an industry leading partner that will help develop very specific and comprehensive corporate policies. With regards to DOT, Department of Transportation, we do have those DOT templates available for our clients to download and ultimately customize to make it their own. And then lastly, the DISA Contractor Consortium. Those are very specific programs and policies that we have available. And as updates occur, we will modify those documents, communicate it out to clients, and ultimately they will have the ability to download it from our, our DISO website. Colin, will you proactively notify us of the customer of regulatory changes? Uh, we will. Uh, and the reason I'm nodding is uh, we actually just had a very recent and, and meaningful adjustment with one of the DOT agencies, PHMSA, the Pipeline Hazardous Materials Safety Administration. Um, they made an adjustment to their random percentage frequency. And so there were a few things that we needed to do. One, communicate out to our clients that this change is going into effect for 2023. Uh, two, make sure that they had any necessary policy modifications accounting for this. And then lastly, in our system, make the adjustments so technically we would be generating the right percentage for that random selection requirement so those uh, companies continue to comply with the PHMSA standards. Colin, two different customization questions, one around uh, can we customize drug testing panels and another one about customizing background packages. Um, can we do that? Uh, most definitely. Again, there are certain limitations with regards to modifying anything with regards to DOT panels. The consortium is dictated by a larger group uh, of owner facilities that are ultimately driving that policy impact. But when you think about the variety of methodologies, so urine, hair, oral fluid, as well as the panels, so what drugs are we testing for? What are those screening levels that we're looking for? Absolutely. We work with a, a great set uh, of laboratory partners that spend a lot of time focused on research and development with regards to emerging drug trends and the science behind it. And ultimately, all of our technical integrations that we have allow us to provide that broad suite of services out to our clients as needed. With regards to background screening, same rules apply. Uh, think of it cafeteria style where clients are able to pick and choose which products they want and ultimately bundle those up into what we refer to as a package. Oftentimes, what we'll see are clients having multiple packages based on the different employee groups that they may have. I'll give you an example. They may have people working in the office that have certain requirements. They may have people driving trucks that have certain requirements that fall under the DOT compliance requirements. And then they may have people working in a, a manufacturing facility, uh, again, with a, a different set of requirements and needs. 
And so allowing customers the flexibility to customize, package that up for standardization across their enterprise is, is critical. Awesome. And then how does DISA's background check turnaround time compare to the rest of the industry? Yeah, it's, uh, we're, we're very proud of our turnaround time. We've got a lot of data that we are able to provide to clients on a regular basis, not only showing their, their package turnaround time, but breaking it up by the individual products and potentially the regions of the country where those products are taking place. With that said, there's so much opportunity to continue to advance with technology. And through some of our recent acquisitions, they've got some best practices and some technology that we will absolutely integrate into the DISA enterprise, which will ultimately be uh, pushed out as a benefit and a value to, to our client base. Great. Colin, thank you again so much. If we were unable to answer your question today, please keep an eye out. We'll be reaching out to you within the next couple of days. Again, Colin, thank you so much for your time today. Thanks so much. All right. Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.